use quite a few different tools in my work. So I would describe myself as a holistic coach and therapist. So I use Reiki as part of my um, work and shadow work, conscious creation, some of the ideas that came up in the set material um, and work very much intuitively. So um, that's what I did. I came across Reiki um, through Dave, funny enough, who taught me back in the 90s. So, um, so that was interesting and then didn't see him for another, what, 20 years or something? <laughs> and uh, the, journey, the journey continued. So um, yeah, that's, that's kind of me really. Morning, everybody. It's a morning. Slightly hung over, slightly under whack. It'll be okay. Um, so I started, my background was really started when I was about three, so I had that whole experience. I found myself looking at my body. Um, lots of different experiences lots of, um, at that age. Um, at what experiences go to different places, and then asking people who lived in the places, was that right? And then found that it was right. And so all those types of things. And essentially that introduced me to the idea that your consciousness is not wholly connected to your body. Okay, and that's really the fundamental point about what spirituality is, I would say, which is understanding that you are not your body. In truth, there's nothing physical happening here in any way, shape or form. And that kind of understanding kind of stayed with me since then. So I opened up, I uh, started doing healing when I was about 20, went around uh, uh, somebody's house. There was a healer there, took the mick out of her quite a bit, um, even though I'd had these experiences, so I wasn't kind of really open to it. She was far too woo-woo for me, so you know, she was way too kind of uh, not grounded. And at the time I was running restaurants, so I had 13, 15 restaurants with whipped bread. And I've always found that um, I want practical use, maybe that's not kind of the, my approach to it. But fundamentally, I found that actually, she invited me to do some healing on my friend who was in the army and a bad back put my hands on and all this kind of energy arrived, which children put me on the sweat, which scared the, the Jesus out of me at the time. Um, my body experiences didn't come with any particular feeling. They were extreme, well, except they were pleasant. Um, this was much more like getting an electric shock. Um, Adrian's back got buried in about two minutes. I went, what the is going on here? Um, and that kind of opened, opened up another level of awareness. Um, so I started to do channeling and all that kind of stuff, wrote a few books, and fundamentally the, the main thing to help you if you're interested to understand is that because there's nothing, but the reason that you're able to do all these things is because it's not a physical environment. I know it looks it and it feels it and it sounds it, but spirituality is all about understanding that your identity is not probably based around your physical body, your physical body is not physical in the way that we think of it, which is the way your mind and body are connected, things like hypnosis work and all that kind of stuff. So what we're going to talk about in today is Reiki. So I opened up a Reiki school in 97. I was healed for 10 years full time and taught lots of people. Um, but the main customer always comes down to this idea that you that your energy, your focus of attention creates an experience. And the reason it creates an experience kind of alludes to what the Seth material will talk about, discovering my own channeling, um, how many years ago, that you can focus this energy, you can focus your attention, you're part of it, it's part of you, and wherever you kind of focus your attention, there will be an effect. And the reason there's an effect is because everything is energy. And that gets us into kind of Reiki and law of attraction, all that kind of stuff. All the same stuff. There is no difference between it. Um, it's all just energy, now. and uh, it works. You can work it, and uh, that's kind of what we're going to talk about, I suppose. Yeah. So we just thought we'd ask first of all, who has and just show of hands, who's heard of Reiki? Who's experienced Reiki? Either doing it, receiving it. Has anyone learnt to do it? I've practiced on myself once a week. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, thank you. So, Reiki is entirely natural. We're all natural healers. We know this because when we cut ourselves, we fall over, we don't die or disappear. 
we naturally heal, our body naturally heals. So that's a natural process that goes on for us. So Reiki is kind of a continuation of that, isn't it, really? Um, so really important for us to know that it is entirely natural and um, that you don't need anything special to do that. So um, yes, you can learn Reiki. Obviously, we teach Reiki. Um, but many people will come to it naturally. I think you might have mentioned, you know, you kind of get a natural sense of that and it comes through, which of course is exactly how, how it is. Um, so, as Dave said, everything is energy. So that's why these things work. And everything that we can imagine, envisage our thoughts, our what else? Thoughts, um, the whole, you know, the whole range of everything we experience and see is all made up of energy. So there's no, there's no end. There's no end of you. And often we think that we kind of end here, or maybe a little bit more if we have an aura, which we hear these things. But actually, there's no, there's no end. Everything is connected. So that allows us to understand a bit how Reiki can actually work. So. I think yeah, I think the, the main thing is to understand what, why why would you bother with Reiki? Why would you why would you take a Reiki course? All that kind of stuff. Um, and I think the reason is because it introduces introduces you to cast iron ideas that you can prove that exist outside of physical your physical senses. So the whole journey to understand kind of who you are. So you start with, with physical and it feels solid. And, you know, we might have intuitions, we might have experiences, all those types of things. But Reiki means universal energy. The history of it is a bit, you know, got the internet to find 25,000 histories. Don't worry about it, it's all stories, basically. But fundamentally, the, the idea of Reiki is that it introduces, to, introduces you to an understanding that everything is energy. And that's the main point of it. You know, that's the whole reason that anyone should explore it. Not, there are various types of Reiki, they will do the same thing, um, fundamentally, uh, they will introduce you to the understanding and the experience. So all of a sudden, you know, you're not, you, can't, you don't know about healing, it's just an idea. You go on a course, you're able to do some zapping on somebody, they, they get better. And what that does is that then shows you maybe that you're different to how you thought. It also introduces them to some different ideas. But one of the main areas in your own spiritual development is confidence. So it's turning something conceptual into something concrete, something that you can experience. But when you experience it, it builds your confidence, and that's another stepping stone on the ladder, um, whatever it's made of. Um, you know, whatever, it's all the same stuff. <laughs> you know, on that ladder, and you're able to take a different step forward and say, okay, well, that's interesting. You know, and that's why Reiki is so useful. It is not an, an end in itself. Um, there's one more. Yeah, so, well, Reiki, yeah. Um, I think a lot of people come to Reiki because, interestingly, they start out with that physical thing, don't they, of Reiki being a healing tool. I've got an ache, I've got a pain, and so they come to Reiki for it to be something that they can use to heal themselves, heal others, um, and um, or perhaps do it as an add-on, you know, do therapies and then think, oh, Reiki's a good one, I'll, I'll, I'll add that on. So, you know, we all come to it from different angles, but often it is just thinking of it as, as something that we can do for physical ailments. And the really interesting thing about Reiki is, is, is why. You know, we don't always stop to ask, why does it work? Why does it work? You know, we can often be just content to do that. We go along, we do the course, we heal our friends, we heal our family, we heal the dog. This is great, we managed to create a car parking space. Fantastic, Reiki is amazing. But actually, Reiki is so much more. So the important question is to consider why does Reiki work? Why does it work? That's where the self-development starts to begin. That's where it becomes more than just, just a tool that we can use in our lives and actually something that can really enrich and inform and create our whole self-development. So it's actually a whole self-development system, isn't it? Yeah, so if you, if you think about where you're trying, well, I mean, last question, what, what do you think spirituality is? Because, you know, we're here talking about self-awareness and spirituality, but it, people find it quite tricky to define it. And it's like anything, you don't know where you're going, 
then that's the reason there are so many different conceptual ideas about what it is and how it works is because people are often reticent to decide what it is. You know, they think they're going to make a mistake, which you can't do. But fundamentally, what, what do you think spirituality is? It's not a thing. A lot of people say, well, it makes me feel like this. And, okay, but that doesn't define what it is. Coffee makes me feel good after in the morning. It doesn't kind of define what coffee is. What, what is spirituality? It's different for everyone, isn't it? We've all got a different view of what spirituality is and it works differently for different people. No. <laughs> and I can only say that because I've been teaching for like 35 years. And, and that's it. conceptually, I understand exactly what, what you mean, but conceptually, spirituality is not going to be a feeling. We have individual feelings. You know, so people have individual feelings about Reiki, what it feels like, and that type of thing, and they think that's what that's what Reiki is, you know, and experiences, what, experiences, and all that kind of stuff. But, but what? Any, you know, what do you think spirituality is? And then taking the opportunity to explore, what does that mean? What, what can I do with that? You know, what, what, what does that really mean? <laughs> I've made notes so we don't go off massive tangents, because as you can imagine, we can. <laughs> um, so yeah, so it can be a practical help, but it also opens the doors to um, your psychic development, and also the understanding of yourself as an immortal being sounds like something out of a vampire film, doesn't it? 
but you are immortal, as Dave often says, you know, you're as dead now as you'll ever be. Which is, uh, sorry. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so it's really understanding, it's kind of turning everything about on its head. Um, and really becoming aware of yourself as an immortal being. And then that really opens you up to so much more because if you didn't think you were gonna die, you didn't have to spend your life being scared you were gonna die, and that you were gonna kind of live forever and have this, you know, all these expanded, interesting experiences, then what might you do with your life? How might you live differently? Have these yeah. different understandings? And that's a really inter interesting question as you kind of go through, you understand the energy more. So, for example, if we were to remove all your senses right now, to remove every single sense you have, which is only five, okay, so you've got your five senses, if we were to just remove them, would you, would you still exist? Would you still exist? Yeah? Yeah, you would exist. But, so how would you exist? You exist. Consciousness. Yeah, you 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 would you would be awareness. You're, so spirituality is really trying to move you outside of these five senses and move you into something where you're understanding yourself as as consciousness, but it's not limited to just the five senses. So what would happen if you stayed, you know, just took away your five senses for like 24 hours? You begin to develop different experiences. You might begin to dream in some way. You might have sensations and feelings and awarenesses. You still have memories. You know, you still be you, wouldn't you? And that's just another version of death. Just remove yourself from the five senses. You still exist. You're still you. you never lose yourself. But you begin to tune in to these other energetic systems and experiences, and you'll realise you are literally now as you ever going to be. You are immortal, quite literally. And the <coughs> thing about that, Claire says, is you might ask yourself, how does that, how would that change me if I had an experience of that? So if you knew this was one lifetime out of many, you will exist. You existed before, you exist now, you exist after. None of it's physical. That's kind of ultimately where Reiki, Reiki takes you, or an understanding of energy, Reiki's a way, an understanding of energy takes you to. It's quite an interesting thing to think about. Because you are literally immortal and that's dead now as you're ever going to be. You will find out when you die that you're immortal. The great thing is you can find out you're immortal before you die and then live a very different life than you want than you do already maybe. You know, might fundamentally change how you approach each moment or yourself. And that's another benefit of breaking out of your five senses. And often we I think, experience that in simple terms of, you know, like closing our eyes. You know, often when we go to do something, don't we, that's kind of more spiritual, some kind of practice, we you know, close our eyes. And that's a nice, easy way to get a sense because we kind of close, you know, our eyes are so, you know, just aware of right? taking in everything all the time and getting the brain working. And actually often when we close our eyes, and take a breath and then we can just drop into something completely different and it just allows us to kind of like disengage one of those very powerful um, senses and then we can start to focus on that in our journey of what's going on so that can really help us to just get into that you know that's just probably one 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 sense um, you know it can be really powerful just to help just to help you you know to just sort of get an experience of that i mean if i sit here and close my eyes now then I will start to feel that energy. And actually, maybe we should do that. Should we do that? Let's just see what happens. Let's just play, shall we? Just go a bit off the script. <laughs> so let's invite you to close your eyes if you feel safe. And it can be quite nice to put your feet on the ground. And feel points of contact that you have against whatever is supporting you, the ground, the chair, your back, your legs, your feet, letting those eyes be really soft, and using the breath 
can really help you to get out of that busy mind. Our brains can often be worrying. And so taking a nice breath in through the nose and exhaling longer than your inhale sends a lovely message to the mind to let you know you're safe and allows you to relax a little bit more. And if you need to take a few more of those breaths, you do. And reminding yourself that you are safe Allowing your, your edges to soften, expand. And just be open to more information. And that may not come now. Come later. We're not trying to force anything or do anything. It's an invitation to open up to more. Because this is your natural state, being connected to all that is. There is no separation in this place. You're part of everything that you can imagine. You are immortal and utterly powerful. You are energy. And you are so loved. sense of energy. You might feel that in your hands. And if you don't, that's okay. Just know it's there anyway because that's who you are. I didn't feel it for years. So don't let that affect your experience. Just trusting. It's really about trusting, being safe and opening up to more. It's like putting out a little invitation. And it's not to the universe, because you are the universe. It's you allowing yourself to expand. Slowly, when you're ready, coming back into your body, taking your focus just behind your eyes, and then opening your eyes when you're ready. <laughs> Don't 
everyone's looking very peaceful. <laughs> If you feel you'd like to shout out a few words or share something. I'd like to see a lot of shapes and images. Well, I do that sort of thing for you know, lots of animals and try and things and things like that. It's always very relaxing. Yeah, lovely. Thank you for sharing. Absorbing a lot of energy in my hands. It's okay. Lovely. Okay. It's yeah. always. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, that's where I tend to feel it most as well. Yeah. Uh, Tingling as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tingling. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Sharon. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else? So sometimes, and like I say, I, I, I used to be the person that used to go to these kind of events. And everyone would be like, oh, I can see this and that, and there's dolphins leaping through my vision, and there's this, and there's purple, and there's crystals. And I'd be the one that'd be sitting there going like, oh, no, nothing, nothing. So, if that's you, I hear, I hear you. <laughs> Psychically, I hear you. So I just want you to know that that is your natural state, but because of how we're brought up to be physical humans, we kind of lose that connection in a sense, but it's always there, it's always there, so you can grow that journey by doing something as simple as that, connecting to it, and, um, and the healing, you know, let's talk a little bit about the healing. Yeah, so, so I think if you think about what it is that you actually do there, so if you close your eyes, you remove yourself from the five senses, or your ideas of colour and shape and all that kind of stuff, and, and by doing that, what you enable yourself to do is to connect with what you could call your inner senses. So if you think about the world you're in, you've got inner, outer senses, find them, show you this world. You make a lot of judgments about that. Then the inner senses are the ones that are developing when you start to see shapes and that type of thing. And the thing about the inner senses, called psychic senses, a bit of a loaded term, but the inner senses is that they're undefined at the minute. So I think Liz will be talking about channeling later on. So Liz, his inner senses are more tuned, so you've been practicing for a lot longer, removing limiting ideas about how they work and how they don't work, and what they are and what's possible and what's not possible. And the thing about understanding what we just did is that that is healing fundamentally. Healing is about bringing yourself back to a natural state of health and wellness, whatever that, whatever that would be for you. But fundamentally, it's refreshing. So you may feel refreshed, close your eyes for a few minutes, and that's because your natural state is not physical. It's not your unnatural state isn't physical either. It's, your, you know, we are here for a reason, to explore who we are, but your natural state is healthy, relaxed, chilled out, energetic, motivated, and Yes, it's having an actual experience of your connectedness to yourself and experiencing it outside of the five senses. Being solely within the five senses is very lonely. So I'm told I've never experienced it, frankly. But I imagine being isolated in the five senses, trying to understand the world where science is just heading you down this catastrophic route of misunderstanding thinks the world's such a mess, and, you know, the way it is. But when you can just turn inward, that's what a Reiki session does fundamentally. I mean, everything is Reiki, everything's universal. But a Reiki session, um, I'm not saying that, but a Reiki session is, it's a way for you to tune out your five senses, get back into your senses that are primary. So your inner senses are your primary senses. Your five senses are not. They are a feedback system. Which ultimately will lead you back to the same material and the same that type of thing. So, so that's, what, that's where Reiki kind of takes you. you know? It takes you into a place where you begin to rely on yourself, your inner self, much more than the five senses. Your five senses are lovely liars. They'll tell you that it's solid, they'll tell you that it's real. It's none of those things at all. Even, even a quick trip down science will tell you that. They're lovely liars. You can't rely on them except to count your bank balance, drive a car, know where the coffee is. 
very few things. The rest of them you should be relying on your primary senses. And that's why Reiki is so good. That's why all spiritual systems, no, a few spiritual systems are good um, because they, they enable you to come back to yourself fundamentally, expand your consciousness and your awareness. They put the five senses in context. It's one tiny little slice of your broader identity and therefore you stop relying on them as much. Mm -hmm. well, when you do that, life gets a lot better. So yeah, so I was going to lead on to that, but um, you know, we're brought up in a society where it's very much uh, kind of very mind based, and so you know, science and the mind and all of that is very much key. So, what happens is that, that we kind of get sucked into that. And that takes us away from who we really are. It takes us away from our intuition. It takes us away from our knowing, our experience of who we are, our experience of being connected and cooperative. And it creates a, a world where, you know, where we can often feel really separate and isolated. And, you know, and it can feel like we're struggling and really pushing and striving to create things. And I know I've spent a lot of my life like that, you know, really in kind of action and you know, trying to create things that way. And so when you understand this stuff, it's very much, it's, it's very liberating because you realise that you don't have to create in that way because you are a powerful creator, which you probably don't know. I'm guessing no one's ever told you you're a really powerful creator. You create your reality, you create your experience. So that leads you to opportunities, some opportunity to think, oh, what do I actually want? What do I want? You know, what's really important to me? What do I want to create here? And often people think, oh, you know, my purpose, I'm spending my life looking for this elusive purpose. How many of us have been there? Like, oh, I wonder what my purpose is. It's, it's not something out there that you need to find. It's something that you actually have the power to create. If you want to take responsibility and you want to explore, then that's what we kind of need to do, really, is to tune in to more of that version of ourself, that is data, the broader self, because in that place we are intuitive, we are connected to everything, to all that is, thoughts, emotions, feelings, ideas, probabilities, what you think of as past, future lives, they're all there in that kind of big ocean available to you, so that's very empowering, it's really empowering, stuff isn't just happening to you, if you want to take responsibility and conversely to what we think we need to go on that journey that I just gave you a tiny slice of is go inside ourselves because when we go in there then we find that connected place I don't know about you but I came out of that even just leading it feeling like oh I feel so calm I feel relaxed I feel connected there was no thought it was just a peacefulness and that tells me that I'm not in that doing mode, I'm in being mode, I'm connected, I'm in love, I'm in life, and I can do what I want with that. I have control, in a sense, control is a loaded term, but, you know, I have, it's an opportunity, let's say that, it's an opportunity. So then it's like, well, what do I want to do with that? Because I'm a creator, I'm not just here to experience. I can create, not just the car park in spaces either, mm -hmm. I create my experience if I want to take responsibility for my experience and take responsibility for my power, because I am a creator, I'm immortal. So that's kind of expanding the world of, of what you think of as your world. Um, okay, if I just touch on mm. something there, which is, um, Intellect and intelligence are not the same thing. Okay, your intellect is woefully unintelligent, incapable of understanding yourself. It's incapable of understanding reality. It's incapable of a gazillion and one different things because it's based on the five senses. So we, we raise up the intellect because of the nature of our kind of history and how that's kind of played out. We raise up the intellect as the kind of the archetypal number one thing. But actually, intellect, it's, it's stuck. Well, wh where is it, where's your intellect stuck? Just throw it out there, get you thinking. Mm -hmm. so, wh where, where is your intellect stuck?
stuff. Where is it still in here? It's in here because it's in your memory banks. Yeah, so it's limited, but it's limited in other ways as well, isn't it? You're right. Yeah, yeah, cool. Which place is it limited in? But your intellect is only ever in now, isn't it? It's only ever in trying to judge, survive in the present moment. And the reason that that's woefully limited is because your broader consciousness spans time and experiences time in a very different way. And so the reason that we have intellectual, sorry, in, in kind of experiences that come in, coincidences, all that kind of stuff, they're actually far more rock bed reality than the intellect. The intellect can show you a snapshot of where you are right now. And as Claire was saying, because, because it's been such a loaded term historically, and there's actually nothing going wrong, by the way, our history is exactly kind of where it needs to be in order for us to develop further. So it's not as though we're victims to the past and that kind of stuff. Um, but fundamentally, things like Reiki, things like Reiki, Reiki, when taught well, which I also want to just touch on, Reiki, when taught well, will help you understand that your, five, that your intellect is one tiny snapshot, it's massively unreliable, you should rely on it for capital bank balance and a couple of things. But once you kind of go outside of that, which is really what the spiritual search is, isn't it? So do that, actually feel empowered. You know, you went outside of your five senses for a few seconds and you felt a little chilled out, whatever. So imagine if you were to make that your primary experience and that this is your secondary experience. It's great here, you know, I love it. I love being human, but, but I'm not human and neither are you, not in the truest sense. We will never see each other, because I'm energy, you're energy, I don't really look like this, except here. You look like this here, but that's not really what you ultimately look like. But we can experience each other in very different ways. And, and that's what things like, that's, that's, what saying, that's what Reiki taught well, spiritual, spirituality taught well does. So it removes the barriers to that experience, and you eventually go, you might have done it really, wow, okay, that's, that's what it is then, okay. And you drop the physical much more, you appreciate it, love it. We went out and played music last night, had a great time, I drank too many beers, and I thoroughly enjoyed that, and all that kind of stuff, but whatever. But I'm still not physical. I may look like this, but I'm still not physical. There's nothing physically happening. And that's why it's empowering, because you lean back on your natural, empowering, relaxed state. So yeah. your intellect is not intelligence. Yeah, that life really takes yeah. us out of that, doesn't it, a lot of the time. You know, we can get really caught up in this kind of busy life and doing stuff, as I was saying earlier. And, you know, our mind is really, is really about keeping us safe, which is great. That's fantastic. That's really, really useful. That that's what it wants to do. Its, it's role is to keep us safe. But the way that it does that is that it's always scanning for what it knows and what feels safe. And a lot of the time it's finding stuff that didn't feel safe and reminding us of that. So we're like, oh, don't do that. Remember when you were five and you did that, that was really bad, so don't do that again. And so that can be really limiting. We can live our whole life within the mind without realizing. And often what I find, what I used to find before I become, became aware of this, to say was going into this kind of pushing, doing, mode and actually what I've learned is the opposite is what we did there for those few precious minutes was to actually relax which goes against what we think doesn't it it's like a normal life where we're busy and we're caught up oh my god I've got to do this I've got to do that I've got to do this and we get in that kind of you know hyper mode and when we're in that mode, actually even science will tell you, because I teach this a lot of the time with my clients around trauma and the body, that actually when we're in that mode, we've actually gone into fight or flight, we've gone into survival mode. And actually, if we're in human knowledge terms, you have three brains, and the one that has the logic and rational um, experience going on goes offline when we get into what the body feels like as trauma. Goes offline because when a tiger's chasing you, you don't need to stop and think, Hmm, I wonder which tree I'll climb up. You just need to get the hell out of there as fast as you can. So, you know, science and 
biology will want to go in that road because the brain likes to know these things, doesn't it? So it's important for us to, to realise actually we have power. So when we're in those situations, the most important thing, the most empowering thing we can do is come back to ourselves. And the breath is brilliant for that. So we can just take a breath and come back and start to relax and realise, oh yeah, I'm not physical. I don't have to forcefully try and push and create from that kind of ego kind of personality way. Actually, I can just relax and step back and step into who I really am. I can step into what you think of as the universe. But it's not the universe because that's outside of you. It's your broader self of you that's connected to all that is. And that's where your power is. Because in that place you're unlimited. You'll never die. You're, you're magic. You're you also have, have access to a vast, yeah. vast amount of information that's not available to you in the five senses. So if you're relying on the five cents, I mean, on, on one hand, if you get yourself into tricky situations, your re relaxation is your superpower, and relaxation is a superpower. So you know, the more you chill out, the more you relax, the more you allow other information in, hey, life's better, so that's cool. And you end up not getting yourself into those tricky situations in the first place, because you're not creative. Okay, you're not, because we venture into more attraction and all that kind of stuff, you know, once you kind of move through the Reiki system, that's where everything goes, that's the pyramid. Reality. So you don't get yourself in those situations in the first place, but if you can, if you think of a muscle, most people are trying to create this kind of out there, that's what they use the intellect, and they're trying to understand all this stuff in Turkey as well, which is also possible. Pointless. Okay, just go around the circles. So your main muscle, the muscle that you have, is actually your inner self. So to come back to that in any situation you can is a much, much more practical, reliable thing to do. But what you must do is remove your limiting beliefs at the same time. So there's no higher self, okay? There's nobody better than you. There's no spirit going, I'm better than you, you're down there, and whatever. That's, that's really just nonsense. Um, and I just wanted to touch on some limiting ideas around Reiki, because we're kind of touching on Reiki as well. So a little break for something, don't we? Um, so, <laughs> so yeah, so you might have heard of, who, who's heard about Reiki attunements? Are we okay to touch yeah, on right, this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, who's heard that. about Reiki attunements? What, what have you heard about? You have to have them and all that kind of stuff. Sorry, I'm just going to get into trouble, don't worry. <laughs> I, want liber I want to liberate you. So there is this idea with Reiki that, so Reiki, uh, uh, the, the original Reiki didn't have attunements, okay? You know, it was based out of Taoism and, Bud and Buddhism. There was no attunements, attunements came in much later on. So one of the most disempowering things about Reiki are attunements. Because you have to go to somebody else to empower you. So if you imagine that your spiritual search is about knowing yourself, Understanding who you are, understanding that you don't need, that you are all that is, you are whatever it is. But then you're required in order to learn this thing to go to somebody else who does these magical things. And all of a sudden you can do Reiki. Yeah. That is completely disempowering and it's nonsense. You don't need. The whole beauty of Reiki is that it's an understanding that you have it already. You do not need attunements. Attunements come from the word atonement, which comes from the word at one moment. You are already at one. You don't need somebody else to at one you. Okay? So if you're going to learn Reiki, just try and remember that these are rituals, just like the Catholic rituals. Doing the incense, they are based around people's beliefs and they're based around intellectual ideas of we're less than. Spirit is up here in order to connect with spirit. We need somebody else, a priest, a Reiki teacher, a guru, whatever it is, to, sudden, to somehow connect us. Okay, that's not true. You can do the beauty of Reiki is that you shouldn't be having attunements. Now, that doesn't mean you don't take some time to tune in, like you did there, and experience things, but does it, does it empower you? to have to go to somebody else to connect to you? Or does it disempower you? Disempower you. 
customers. So one of the things to look out for is if you are doing, and it's tricky, I know, because if you do burn break in, I'll tell you, most people tell you you have to have tumors. But when you go along and do it, just go along bearing in mind that the reason you're having the attunement is really based upon the teacher's belief, which is an intellectual one, it's got nothing to do with what's actually happening energetically. And accept it, accept the attunement, and do it with the awareness that you're kind of just, you know, you're accepting the, the gift to yourself. You're not accepting it from another, no other person can make you more spiritual, more powerful, whatever. And bear in mind that humans were never, ever, ever, ever in the original Reiki system. They came into Reiki when it got very westernised. All the way around, and people would have charged a whole ton of money to attune you to Reiki masters and all that kind of stuff. And that's where they came from. So, slightly radical view, maybe. maybe not. But um, if you do take Reiki, you risk just bear in mind. That as well. Another disempowering thing is mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, just mention about, yeah, that's like the beliefs, isn't it? Yeah, it, 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 it's a belief that you need it. It's not true. Okay, 99% of the beliefs you have are not true. Most people have never had an original thought because we're just, we're living our parents. Which are, we're living their parents and we're just trying to survive. So, understanding this stuff generally will throw you out of that cycle, if you like. But particularly in terms of Reiki, um, when I started teaching Reiki back in 97, there was some weird shit going on. People were doing naked Reiki up in London, not me, right? <laughs> they were saying, you've got to be naked to do it, the energy doesn't go through clothes. And, and then they were saying, you've got, you've got to wear white, man, because everything's peace and love and all that kind of stuff. It's all rubbish, you know, it's all based upon people's ideas of what it is, not really what it is. So just, just be aware of that. You know, you don't need a crystal to empower you. Crystals are lovely. You know, they work by piezo, piezo electricity, we understand all that type of thing. But fundamentally, you're the one believing it will give you the power. Your belief about it, your belief about the attunement, your belief about anything will play itself out energetically because everything's universal energy. That's what makes all about. Everything's energy, man. You know, and whatever you think it is, is Christmas a lovely? We have some, don't we? Yeah, but we don't subscribe any particular powers to them. But we don't subscribe any particular powers to them because we know that's because it's not a physical power. power. <laughs> so I could ascribe physical, you know, the power to a chair just as much as a crystal or a candle mm -hmm. or a mandala or a dream catcher, whatever. And that's really important to realize. And that's not to knock them. They're great mm -hmm. fun. They're great fun and they're lovely. But you're disempowering yourself like an achievement if you fall into the trap of thinking that somehow these upgrade your energy. They don't. The belief in that actually downgrades your energy because you yeah. think it's the. Yeah. If we were told over the years, if there was a chair, if there was a chair religion, we were told to pray the chairs. We'd be praying the chairs. You know, it's like we you know the blue chairs, but then the green chair, that kind of stuff. You know, it's not true. Everything's energy. It's all equal. You ascribe to it whatever it is that you want. <coughs> Same with the tunes. Yeah, we're very much about the most empowering version of anything that we do. It's really about empowering others, helping people to empower themselves. And that does often mean, usually means, challenging your beliefs and questioning your beliefs, becoming aware of your beliefs. So, yeah, and breaking the sacred cows, not being afraid to question, you know, it's like, dare I mention chakras, oh, no. <laughs> that'll set him off, and, um, but it's important to remember, as Dave just said, you know, I can subscribe a magical power to my necklace, I can say, like, I would a crystal or whatever it is, and so, you know, this, this star is going to keep me safe, this star is going to keep me safe, and then what happens when it breaks, what happens if I lose it, <gasps> oh my god, you know, something catastrophic is going to happen. I've given my power to the star. It's just a star. But the important thing about that to realise is that it's my belief that's creating that. So if I can believe that the star can be some magical force, why not believe that I can be the magical force? Why not take responsibility and put it where it belongs in the most empowering 
way. So even things like the universe, oh, the universe has done this for me. You're creating the universe, it's your reality, it's your universe. So you can choose the disempowering version, which is this happens to me, or you can choose to step into your power and your magnificence, your infinite, immortal, stunningly beautiful, incredible selves, and say, yeah, I have power here, I have power, I'm not, I'm not, you know, stuck in believing that something else is giving me this, or something else just happens to have, wow, look, you know, the universe has done this, or, oh, my crystal, we've done, you know, it's done that. A, 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 lot, a lot of the times that can feel quite disconnecting, I will say. Okay, so, what, so once we're on spiritual search and self-awareness, we've got our crystals and we love them, we've got our stars, it's very pretty star, right? There's nothing wrong with it, right? Well, it's lovely tip, that kind of stuff. So it can feel as though one is, been, you know, having everything taken away from you, you know, that, oh, it's not about the achievement, or it's not about this, or about that, it's that kind of stuff, and that's a very natural reaction for people to have, they kind of feel a bit, you know, what do I get to rely on, then, that's fundamentally where we go, and of course, the place you get to rely on is, is you, and your use of energy, so it can feel slightly disconnecting, the jarring, sometimes, to remove these crutches that we have, and that's all cool. I'm not saying everyone should stop taking their pills or stop eating your lovely yoga or do whatever it is you're going to do, carry on, whatever it is you enjoy. Um, but, but fundamentally, if you look at a lot of the spiritual systems, they're all ending up with the law of attraction. You look at a lot, a lot of the teachers, self awareness teachers, it's all a big pyramid. And that's because that's where it goes. It all goes there. It all goes there with the understanding. Of course, it goes further than there as well. But it all goes to the understanding that everything is energy. Your use of energy is what is fundamentally going to expand your awareness, and because you do that, you gain more sense of self. But, so, it's all going to go there. It's been going there for 20 years. It's been going there forever, right? And it'll go there and go, go beyond it. But I just wanted to cover one, just say one last sacred cow, <laughs> which is in a nice way, which is the Reiki symbols. Okay. So, who's heard of the Reiki symbols? You know what I'm saying. <laughs> Who's heard of the Reiki symbols now? Okay, right. So, Reiki, yes. Okay, so Reiki symbols are a bit like, a bit like the star on the crest and that type of thing. They came into Reiki, not originally, weren't in the original Reiki system, right? But you go into Buddhist temples, you see the Reiki, the Reiki symbols all over them, all over the place. They're, they're symbols that are used in attunement. They are symbols, I can draw it, but I can't, you know, draw it, but, um, when I first started Reiki, some people were out the Reiki book with the Reiki symbols. You had to buy it under the counter, like a, like a dirt. So you weren't allowed to show them publicly because they were supposed to disempower you, right? So we went and bought this book by Diane Steen and it had the Reiki symbols in it. And people would say, I can't send you the book. And it's like, okay, dude, just give me the book. And the guy said, it's been a brown paper bag. And I said, what are you doing? And he went, it's against the Reiki Federation and, and, and all that. And that's not true, actually. Like to be in the Reiki Federation all those years ago. Um, it's, it's, all these things are the Reiki symbols, and there are lots of versions of Reiki, it's Bruder Reiki, all those kind of things. Reiki symbols are just, what, what do you think they are? What do you think the Reiki symbols are? Based on this little introduction. It's supposed to be something that can channel your thoughts and energy. Yes, exactly. To channel your thoughts and energy. So, if somebody gives you a Reiki, nobody can make you a Reiki master, right? all that kind of stuff. You do the training, or you should learn to be a teacher. That's what it should be about, not an achievement. So, the Reiki symbols are an anathema. They are added in quite late on in the Reiki system to try and speed up people's training. That's why they were, they were added in. It's not going to help you at all in any way, shape, or form. Having said that, they're a great way to begin to use your energy. So if you're doing a Reiki system, or you're looking at a Reiki system, a Reiki system, they have symbols, then you can, okay, as you've said, perfectly rightly, it's not that, there's no power in the symbol. There's no power in the symbol. So a lot of Reiki systems that don't know that will have loads of Reiki, Karuna Reiki is like about 3,000 symbols, all that kind of stuff. It's a bit like having 10 watches on your arm and thinking you've got more time, right? It's, it's nonsense, it's not true. Okay. It's just because having more, what do you think having more symbols is supposed to do? Exactly. It's, you, you, what they're saying is this is a more powerful Reiki system than this. Okay, right? Okay. But actually, 
if we're learning about energy and how we focus our attention, then a singular focus of attention is much more powerful than a totally disparate focus of attention to 20,000 symbols you've got to learn before you can play your bar and do your and this kind of stuff. Actually, it does the opposite. It does the opposite. So, more Reiki symbols will give you any more power. Okay? If you are going to take Reiki, and actually Reiki should be taught at school, I think, but taught well in school, right? that's the caveat. So it should be taught at school and understand your healing and how it works, all that type of thing. But just watch out if you ever take a Reiki course where you're going to disempower yourself. If somebody says you've got to learn 30 symbols before you get to level two, just kind of have a little... Cleanse your chakras. Yeah, chakras don't exist, guys. Let me just tell you that is a real, that's a real chakra. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, this is about Reiki. Part of Reiki is that you want, collapses to the floor. <laughs> part of Reiki is that you attune the chakras and all that kind of stuff. Chakras also are worth, they're worth challenging. I'll just leave that there. They're definitely worth challenging, whether they exist or not. I did my life, they don't. I, I used to have a, a spiritual library when I had a spiritual centre. We probably had 300 books in them. 200 were about crystals, 40 were about chakras. I read them all. I read everything. Because it was interesting. I read them all, and I promise you, things like that, and I don't mean if you, you know, things like that will end up disempowering you and not empowering you. The first books around chakras were saying if they go a particular way, you're a psychopath. If they go this, so this all develops over time, right? You know, you weren't around, maybe you weren't around 35 years ago when all this stuff was kind of kicking off. I promise you, it just changes over time. It's the same story. But the key, the key is to recognize that just because it's old, it doesn't mean it's right. Yeah? It could still be nonsense just because it's been around for a bit. Look at Christianity, right? So always come back to yourself. Always try and think about understanding energy is that's the game. That's that's where the action is and that's why Reiki is so good. And if you're going to take a Reiki course, do it with some mindfulness if you can. Um just say if you say choose the there. most empowering. Choose the most empowering. Action. Yes, do that's that. That's what I say. Choose what feels the most empowering and now you've been on with all of this information. You can't forget it. <laughs> <laughs> it's there. So it's up to you what you do. Yeah. But as I say, if you want to develop yourself and really understand who you are and the nature of reality and really explore, then you have to decide. Am I going to go into other people's beliefs and ideas or am I going to...